like this spring I revisited Africa to get this crowdfunding started, which is running two days only. So it stops at midnight to in Tuesday, um, Middle European time. So uh, even earlier in the United States, if you are listening from there. Uh, um, later, is it later? In, in Australia, behind the time uh, limit. Okay, it is called African Forge Skin Tales. I'm grateful you have it down here and also the link where you can fund it for the next two days. And we, it is in crowdfunding for social media because there we can reach the African public. And I emphasize it's the African public. It's not the international public, it's not the North. They should discuss uh, information that is fact-based about circumcising and not circumcising. And I'm telling you stories about this. I'm wearing a t-shirt that I bought at the Luo festival in uh, Nairobi. It is called uh, Jaluo Oksechi. It's a local language and it says, a Luo does not beg. And it talks about the proud, the prideness uh, of a, what they call a tribe. I'm not allowed to call it tribe, I call it ethnic community. Um, and a Luo does not beg. They are proud and they, those, uh, maybe, uh, maybe they are a little bit prouder than others, but all the, um, uh, ethnic communities are proud of themselves and if a Luo man, it's a non-circumcising community traditionally, if a Luo man uh, meets a Kalenjin or a Kikuyu or a Luya or a Bukusu, he might say, you are not a real man, you don't have a foreskin, but they, they might, might say, you uh, are not a real man because you have that foreskin. This is, this is the African context and ethnic traditional uh, circumcision. The Luo area is, in, is around Lake Victoria, and it was around 2010 when, for example, Radio Lake Victoria got an offer. It was contacted by a benevolent, benevolent health organization and by PR agencies. Why don't you advertise circumcision in your community? And all those radio stations got good money for advertising circumcision because at that time there had been new um, scientific studies come out, many of you know about them, that being circumcised is supposed to lower the uh, incidence of HIV, the probability of acquiring HIV from a sexual partner as a man by 50 or 60 percent. So it was mainly the Americans who then decided, okay, that can't, can't be bad, uh, 56 percent, 56 to 50 percent less, uh, let's circumcise the Africans in the area where we find it necessary. They, they started that huge campaign with a lot of money. The US Congress allotted money to it, uh, gave it to the PEPFA, the Presidential Fund. The PEPFA commissioned CDC, uh, which is the Centers for Disease Control. Maybe you heard about them in the pandemic that is now over. Um, and it's steered by the CDC in Nairobi. And all this money is being funneled through state ministries and NGOs who now started earning money with C circumcision and gave it to radios and uh, propaganda. I must say, it's propaganda. And it started in 28 sub-Saharan Africans and also where the Luo live as a non-circumcising community near Lake Victoria in Kenya. The president, I talked to a president of a fisherman's association in that area and he got a per foskin that is cut in his fisherman's association, he got one dollar. Which is not bad for a fisherman in, uh, in Kenya, which is of course little for an, a, a USS organization, it's worth it, huh? So you give that money. But it was an irony. Um, he had, this president of the fisherman's association, he waited with his own circumcision till later. He talked to his fisherman, to one who was, had been circumcised, and that guy told him, don't do it. Uh, it, everything's worse afterwards, and it was very, very painful. So he did not do it himself, though he was earning money by promoting it. And, but in, and so it came that the new uh, sponsored promoters found the campaign is not so successful among adults as we have hoped. We don't reach the target numbers. We have to resort to minors who don't decide themselves. And they changed their target group to minors and even to early infants, babies. And the promoters addressed their parents and they came into the primary schools and they told, told the nine or 11 year old boys that they should get rid of their 
Hoskin. It is documented in studies that some of these campaigners were comparing that prep use to the bladder of a goat or a dirty sleeve of a, of a, of a coat that you could be got rid of, which is stinking, huh? which is not hygienic, and so on. They did not bother talking much about HIV prevalence. I come to that number even later. Uh, later. Remind me if I forget it. And in maternity words, people started uh, talking to the mothers who gave birth to the children there, and they told me, told them, do you want a clean baby? Montoto uh, Safi in Swahili. And uh, of course, who doesn't want to have a clean baby? So uh, the not so well educated mother decided to have their babies circumcised. And one day, that same fisherman that I told to, talked to, got a visit, got a, confronted by his nine-year-old son. This son had a con consent form he got in school, and he, he asked him, uh, Father, I, you have to sign here for me to get circumcised. Because with what has happened, meanwhile, among the Luo, the picture through that propaganda had been changed totally. In the schools, there was a group pressure being developed that the boys who saw the uncircumcised Luo under the shower ridiculed him, made fun of him, and discriminated against him. There was a huge peer pressure being told up, set up by that narr narrative that the, um, that the promoters had put up. And so the father said, okay, I would not do it, dear son, uh, but if it's your wish, I sign the form, because he was a modern father. You don't expect it in Africa. Think of Africa as modern, huh? okay? And the Luo, these ethnic communities, is used to kind of, used to being discriminated against if he is in the minority, like he is, if he's in a college, and he's in the shower after sports among college people among the, his college peers. They, he might be ashamed of his uh, foreskin. There's one story I was told. These, all these stories you will see and hear on African foreskin tales. The fishermen, the studies, the discrimination, and the severely failed circumcision because uh, where boy, young boys were mutilated. You even now find a case like that on you, our YouTube channel, channel where a young man sh called Shab Shadrach was mutilated as 11 years old uh, by a circumcision because that circumcision was done by a trainee and the one who trained the trainee was not present. And responsible was an organization called ICAP, which is a huge international health organization. They had won the contract for that county where Shadrach was living. And uh, Shadrach was mutilated there and they tried to cover it up, which made, made, it, made it much worse. It got infected, he lost all his male organs. I mean, his, his penis is still there, but he cannot be used it for, except for peeing after one and a half years of treatment. And I, I, uh, I talked, no, I, I sent email to ICAP in Columbia, at Columbia University in New York, they are sitting, and uh, they, did, they chose not to answer. ICAP is not the only organization earning money with it. There's also J.H. Piego, which is uh, owned by the Johns Hopkins University, for example. All this will be on African course quintails. Also, what I found out in Zambia, where it is different from Kenya, where they still circumcise the minors, which was stopped by PEPFA, being funded by PEPFA. It was not for prohibited, but it was not funded by the presidential fund of the United States anymore. But it can still be funded somewhere from somewhere else, which the Zambians do. And they are having the same kind of propaganda as in Kenya. All this will be on this social media channel that you find here in my uh, Bauchbinde, as the Germans say. Um, okay. The, and it's, you know, why is it, uh, no, I want to say just one point uh, left. I, why is it African foreskin tails? Why is it not just anti-circumcision channel? I find that it is, it would be very useless. Nobody would listen to it. They, can, they find it somewhere else. The anti-circumcision, uh, I say now, propaganda, the arguments, huh? Um, the aim is like, start a discussion about many aspects, like, 
Now I'm jumping back to Kenya, like the Kikuyu elders who have said, let us uh, circumcise the, um, the youngsters even two years earlier, because now the primary school is cut by two years. We want to get them one still when they're still there. And the churches, they're doing the same. They're incorporated circumcision, ethnic circumcision and medical circumcision into their ceremonies. If you go to for confirmation in any Protestant church or a communion, you call it in Germany, in a Catholic church, you, uh, in that week that you are there, you are uh, circumcised in one of their medical facilities. That is what is happening in Kenya, and it has been like that since uh, the colonial times. Because the, uh, the, the uh, missionaries had thought about how can we convince the circumcising communities to become Christians. Okay, we circumcised that well, that's well, they said. And in uh, Luo country, they did not circumcise. But now they're studying. They are incorporating the bishops, the Catholic bishops, they are also doing medical circumcision now against HIV and uh, do that during the community, communion. So, I'm coming to the end. Oh, maybe you are, you are waiting for that argument about the 50 or 60%. On my way back from Africa, I've interviewed Professor Michel Garen, who is a demographer. He has been saying and writing on and on again for 25 years now that the WHO should not promote circumcision, as they do now, and as UNESCO, by the way, you are in Germany, ask UNESCO Germany what, how they uh, have supported it and why. Um, no, UNICEF, UNICEF, sorry, not UNESCO. Um, you should not do it because it's useless. And he has proven it by demographic data that the non-circumcised community in the long run is as, has, has such a low uh, HIV prevalence as much as the circumcised community. And as the one who has been circumcised during that campaign. But this uh, data is um, being ignored. I think it's because of money and because of all these connections that it has internationally. All right, two days to go, and uh, I hope uh, you will support that endeavor. We have met the target of the crowdfunding, but the more we get, the longer and we digger, the deeper we can dig, and the more we can do from these 28 African countries where the campaign is run. Thank you.